Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing, man? What's up, Nathan Frazier? How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm glad to be back on the microphone with you, and I'm excited about today's episode. Awesome sauce, me too, especially after I broke everybody's minds and hearts last week with the the thing you're doing might not cause you happiness. Oh, well, shit happens. I kind of speak what's on my mind. Yeah, and you know, you, you ended the show last week talking about the amount of people that come to you doing one thing and wanting you to help them do that thing on a bigger scale. And then within less than a year, they end up doing something else. And it was kind of just like a cliffhanger. And I kind of wanted to get into um, why do you think that is? And then how does it relate to, to, to this week's episode? Yep. Well, let's just jump right into the deep end of the swimming pool, shall we? Um, be your weird ass self, right? The, the tagline that my entire brand is really built on really means speak your truth, right? Um, in more of a holistic sense than dollars and cents, I believe that we all have a message for the planet. Maybe not all of us, but the vast majority of the people here have something to offer, have something to give, have some kind of support and help that the community at large and or the planet needs, right? I'm a little bit of a hippie. Um, I, I think people should be treated well. I think us really, really smart monkeys don't do what we could do to take care of the planet and, and the rest of us. And I don't read that as socialist because I am totally a capitalist. However, with that said, the whole be your weird ass self and here's permission to just be who the fuck you are because nobody else on the planet can be as you as you can it makes it really easy to get clients. If you just say, Hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. This is how I do things. This is how it's a pain in the ass to work with me. If you love all that, we're probably going to get along. That makes it really easy to get clients. However, a lot of people that that message kind of hits right between the eyes, once they get into it and they, they start thinking about it and realizing they go, fuck, I, this is the thing that I do and I've done it for years and part of the reason I'm not like just exploding with money and clients that are amazing is not because I'm not being who I am. It's because I'm not being who I am, meaning I'm on the wrong fucking path. I'm chasing the wrong thing. And once they, once they realize that, once they, they get a taste of that, I, and I can see it coming. It actually, it's funny. Um, and she listens to the podcast every week. She'll probably know that I'm, I'm talking about the conversation that her and I just had. I've got a client in my world that's been in my world with me for a little over a year who was a referral from another client who went through the exact same thing that I'm going back and forth in messenger and she's going, Fuck, man, like, I don't know if the thing that I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm like, I can see it coming because I've been watching it the last three to six weeks with this one in particular that I'm talking about. And it ties into what we're going to talk about today because what got you here is not going to get you there. And this applies to business, whether you're doing the thing that you're, that you've been doing, or it applies to doing something different. What got you here won't get you there. It's such a cliche term. And, and so many of, of us have heard it for so long that we don't really pay attention to what that actually means, right? If you're stuck in your business at a glass ceiling, there's several real world reasons for it. If you're stuck in your business at a glass ceiling or with energy or anything like that, and there's a, any question that you might be more interested in doing something else, there's several core reasons for it. A lot of people think that, well, I'm an adult now. I've got kids. I've got a house. I've got so much money that I've got to spend every month to keep my life going the way it is. And I'm stuck doing the thing that I've been doing. And I just got to get better at it and better at it and better at it. And I've got to charge more and I've got like, that's not everybody's path, right? 
all of the shit that got you here could very well be different skill sets that allow you to be the only option doing this other thing that would light you up like a Christmas tree, right? And at the same time, there are people that have been doing what they do for seven, eight, 15 years that they're stuck at a glass ceiling because the way they're doing what they're doing is not scalable, right? Maybe they need to work with fewer clients that pay more. Maybe they need to work with clients that pay a monthly retainer. Maybe they, like, there's all these different pieces to it. The bottom line is, it's not linear, right? When you when you go on a roller coaster, it doesn't just continue to go straight up, right? It goes up and down and around turns and twists and all that shit, right? Or the ride wouldn't be really any fun. It'd be boring as hell. Business doesn't need to have the big lows to be interesting, but the shit that you're doing now over the last six to 18 months are probably not the things that are going to get you to the next level. You're probably going as fast, as hard, as effective and efficient as you can, and you need to adjust that. And this is like, this leads us right into expansion and contraction, right? We, We start in our business and we learn all these things and then pretty soon it's like, well, these three out of 10 things are what actually moves the needle. So I'll stop doing those seven things. Oh my God, now I've got all these resources and all this time. And then we add more shit to our plate, right? Now we've got nine things and four of them are moving the needle. Expand, contract, expand, contract. What got you here won't get you there. What's the next there for you and your business? And then you need to ask yourself, what are all the things that I'm doing? What am I spending my time and my resources on that are not moving the needle? And unfortunately, a lot of people are going to find, fuck, I can't not continue to bring on new clients because I don't know how to package the thing I do in a different way to make more money from less people. Oh my God, what do I do? Right? So when you're saying all this, what I'm seeing in my head is like a triathlon and it's one overall race. You got one goal, but for different segments of it, it takes different things. So if you start off with swimming, the same breathing techniques during the swimming section, aren't going to be what's going to be helping you get past the running section, the backstroke or the um, whatever muscle techniques that, that it takes to get through the water section of building your business. When you get past that point, if you, if you get up on the dry land and you're still trying to do a backstroke to win the foot race, it's just not going to work. Is that kind of what you're getting at? God, I love having conversations with you. And this is one of the reasons that I love copywriters is because you can turn anything into an analogy or a metaphor or a parable, right? Or kind of like, um, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's like backpacking, right? When you start at the trailhead, you can carry all this crazy gear and it's super heavy. By the time you get halfway up the mountain, you can't carry that much shit because the air's a lot thinner, right? Shit's changed. Business is the exact same way. So when you get to that point, when you get to the point where now you're out of the water and you're on the racetrack, how do you go about planning for that next and and obviously it's going to be a case by case scenario, but there's got to be some sort of um, logic behind what you do before you start running the next segment of the triathlon. There is. And this brings me back to an episode that we did, I don't know, two or three months ago, maybe four months ago. Um, It's all based on decision, right? If you're wanting it the thing you do to be different or to provide different results, you have to make a different decision than you've been making. And to tie this back to a previous episode, you got to get clear on what it is that you want, right? Change for change sake, it makes no sense. Why are you making a change? And then you look at that and go, okay, cool. Like I just went through this and I'm, I'm still on the tail end of it. Um, my calendar was buried again right? I spent 18 months getting this business to where it was at. And I finally was able to like, just take everything off my calendar. And I was literally down to like three or four hour work weeks for a couple of months. And it was awesome. But then I added this and then I added that and then I added this. And pretty soon 
by about February, March of this year, my calendar was totally just fucking buried every day, five days a week. And I caught myself working on the weekends and I was like, this is not what I want. So like me, you've got to define what it is that you want. I want to make more money and work less hours. And I think by and large, the vast majority of us are in that boat. I want to do what I want with my own time and not have to answer to anybody. And I want the resources to do it how I want to do it. And this is that constant expansion contraction thing. First, you got to define what it is that you want. And then you've got to ask yourself, how do you get there? And most of us find ourselves stuck in a place and we don't know what to do. Like I've defined what I want, right? And I've got a clear understanding of that, but I don't know how to make this transition. And it's because by and large, we've got assumptions that we believe to be true around aspects of our business or our life that are not actually true. And because we think they're true, we're not questioning ourselves. And so we need to ask ourselves, okay, cool. If I stop spending all that time in that Facebook group, is it actually going to crash my business? I believed that, right? I had to have people like force me to stop doing it. And lo and behold, we made more money. Amazing. Right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point the mirror at you for a little bit because I know you launched Leads Lab. And then as soon as, as Leads Lab was done, you launched Attraction Lab. And now Attraction Lab is going. And right almost at the same time, you, d- you launched Influence Architects, I believe is what it's called. And so I see you doing, gosh, a product launch and then three different or two different service launches. And then I know that you do one-on-one mentoring. And I know on, at least for the architect or the influence architects, you're also doing one-on-one with those people. So for me, looking at what you're doing, I'm just like, holy crap, Landon, how do you deal with all of this? So what are you kind of at that um, point where you're going to have to do another contraction or, or what, what, what's going on in your world and what's in your near future? Yep. Um, I love it. I love it because you and I often talk about a lot of things like how we're going to transition from here to there to there and the notes that we use to, to do these most of the time. Um, we didn't talk about that. What's really interesting is, is this last go around when I was like, fuck this, I'm done, was uh, about September, October of 2018. And it it took me a month or two to like kind of get back in the swing of it. And I started adding stuff to my plate and I, I was like, you know, what's going to happen? Cause this is what Landon does, right? Not everybody does it the way I do. I, I add stuff, add stuff, add stuff. And then I've got to get like focused again. Um, I saw it coming this time and in March or April of this year, it's like three, four months ago, we had this discussion amongst the, the council, right? The, those of us behind this business, And what we decided was, okay, cool. For the last two and a half years, we've built a brand and we've been helping a lot of people that are kind of at a beginner level, right? They might have a skill set that they, that they're trying to get clients for, but they really haven't like got an actual business. And the people that I actually want to work with are the people that actually have a business, right? They've got clients. I want to help people that have those problems because they're different problems than I don't know how to go get a client. So what we did was we created Leads Lab and Leads Lab will help anybody who needs to go get a client be able to go get a client, right? That's what it's for. Does it work for intermediate and advanced business owners? Yeah. Does it work for salespeople to triple the numbers? Yes. But does it also work for beginners? Yes. I went through it once. It took me 30 days and about two weeks of planning and now it's productized. So people can buy that and go through that and I don't need to be involved with it. Attraction Labs, the same thing at a completely different level for a different ideal client avatar for us, people who are consultants who need to get clients on LinkedIn without all the fuckery. Well, I'm, I'm almost done with that and now it will be productized, right? So I don't have to participate in it anymore. What is it that I want? I want to do the one-on-one and the one-on-group mentorship thing that we're doing, which we actually started before both of those. And the plan was, 
let's start this group. There's people in our world that, that want this and are currently getting it. So let's reformulate it. And then let's go build step one, step two, step three. And then we can take the essence of those three steps and we can constantly put that out there to bring people into our world that are the right fit to work with me one-on-one slash one-on group. And I can get my calendar back to about 12 to 15 hours a week, which is my sweet spot. And I'm almost there. I'm literally two or three weeks away from being in that 12 to 15 hours a week thing. And uh, yeah, part of it's I'm a little crazy and I need to have 300 spinning plates on occasion, right? Where I get bored. So I do this to myself two or three times a year. I get way overloaded. But now I know that I do that and I've got processes I can put in place to allow me to do that so I can get the creative freedom out there. And then I can already be planning how to hone that down before I start adding shit to my plate. I'm going to say I feel every single thing that you said, and I'm betting that a lot of the listeners probably go through that same almost self-sabotaging roller coaster that we send, that we uh, seem to fall into habitually. So um, I don't think it's just you. I think a lot of us go through the same thing. Yeah. However, most of us innately, most of us that do that are more creative than science systems and process oriented. And for those of us that do it that way, if we've got systems and processes in place that are built on how we naturally go through that up and down, it makes a world of difference because now we get to allow ourselves to bury ourselves with all this cool, awesome shit. And we know how we're going to get out of it. And in having that, it changes the perspective on how you go about living which at the end of the day, like we talked about last week, what you spend your time doing is what causes happiness. So any final thoughts before we're out of here this week? All of the shit that you're stuck with is probably because you've made assumptions and conclusions about something being true that's not actually true. If you've got an actual business, mean you've got current clients and you do a specific thing and, and you've got an offer and they can buy your thing and it's, and you're stuck, send me a message. If you're not in our main group, go join us. It's the, it's gorilla juice on Facebook. You can find it. Check out the other episodes on our podcast, sales podcast.com. And if you're actually stuck and you've actually got a business and you're looking for another perspective, send me a message. Nice. All right, Landon, I appreciate the conversation. I know the listeners do as well. And until next time, man, I will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scout. I love some of you.